Hey friends, I just heard about Tom T. Hall passing, so I wanted to say a few words. I absolutely love Tom T. Hall's music. It's been a constant source of comfort, joy, and inspiration through most of my adult life. You know, most of my life in general, as a kid riding around in the car, hearing the hits, you know, Clayton Delaney, I love, hearing these hits on AM radio in the backseat of my parents' car. You know, I always loved Tom T. Hall's stuff. Later in life, man, I started digging deeper, and I'm just all in on Tom T. Hall as an artist. He's, uh, you know, I, I don't like to rate things like this, but if I had to think about it, if I had to make a list of my absolute all-time favorite people in the country world, you know, it's an actual country star that had wide acclaim, I think Tom T. Hall's my favorite. I probably listened to more Tom T. Hall music in the last 15 years than any other music. Or I really love, you know, his his music. It has his work has such depth and such wit. There's so much there. He could write about a mining disaster and uh, these miners dying. Something he could relate to as a kid growing up in small town Kentucky, and something he could speak to and uh, not be heavy-handed about it. You know, he could write songs about being on the road and looking terrible and, uh, you know, showing up unannounced to see your dad for the first time in who knows how long. And, and uh, you know, in the first verse, you throw out that your dad didn't even know your dad had a phone. You know, you start throwing out in the second verse something about how, you know, you have a hit recorded, it'll be out. You're talking about your music. You talk about how you're wearing some fake ring, putting on a front, and uh, that's the earliest reference to that I could think of in music. It's way quicker than the hip hop folks, uh, or way earlier than the hip hop folks talking about fronting. But he's talking about the fakeness of it all. And uh, then in the fourth verse, he just happens to drop, oh yeah, I'm sorry I missed mom's funeral. Like, that's heavy, man. That's really heavy stuff. And Tom T. Hall dealt with it so light-handed. It'd be so easy to just beat people over the head with that and be heavy-handed with it. But he just set it up and slid that right in there. And when that happens, it's just like a gut punch. You know, Tom T. Hall wrote with such guts, such depth. Don't know a better way to say it. But... Think about that, man. You're writing about missing mom's funeral, a mining disaster, you know, all of these things that a lot of regular people deal with. And, uh, you know, you write it in a way to where you put it to three chords or three chords. And, uh, you know, you just, he's not like the most gifted singer, but I absolutely love his voice. I love his delivery. I love everything about the way he brings it forth. I think it's more effective than if he had a perfect voice. But uh, he could write about these difficult subjects and put a, make a song out of it, a song that could be played on the radio that act, could actually be a hit, that could be consumed by a mass audience. Man, that is hard. That is really hard to do something like that. And uh, Tom T. Hall did it just about every day of the week. You know, come up with stories like... Harper Valley PTA, that's a pretty damn fun story. And when Jeannie C. Riley sang it, she just brought it way over the top and made it great. And I apologize if I go on a bit too much and gush over Tom T. Hall, but I really, really love his music. And uh, I love his art art form. I'm just really sad to, to see him go. I, I got to see Tom T. Hall play live a couple times. The very first time was at the Bill Monroe Festival in Bean Blossom, Indiana. And we didn't know that Tom T was there, but we're watching, me and my buddy Todd Fox, uh, we're there watching um, Jimmy Martin and loving it. Jimmy Martin's great. He's like, I'd like to bring a friend out with me. And uh, he says, here comes Tom T. Hall. And Tom T. Hall walks out onto this stage at a bluegrass festival in Southern Indiana, you know, this humble stage. And uh, he walks out and he plays a whole bunch of his hits with Jimmy Martin, completely unannounced. He had retired from, I think it was right around the time he had retired, maybe just a couple years after that, from uh, performing live. 
just going to get out of the business, which is always, you know, probably a smart move for when you've made a little bit of money, just sit back and enjoy it. But he came out and he was great. We saw him walking around just amongst the people. We walked up to him, me and my buddy Todd, and we're like, hey, man, uh, you know, we talked for a little bit. He was really nice, shook his hand, shook Tom T. Hall's hand, and he was super nice and you know, care if we take a picture. We took a picture, and my buddy Todd, this is back in the days of film, something happened with the film and didn't, I can't remember whether we lost it or what, but we lost that. A few years later, we're back at the Bill Monroe Festival again, watching Jimmy Martin, and he says, I'd like to invite a friend of mine out here, and we're like, what are the chances? And here comes Tom T. Hall again. And he comes out and plays, and was great. Just brought the house down, and then afterwards, we went and talked to him a little bit, took a picture. We saved that one. Mine's somewhere in the house here. I should dig it up. I should have dug it up before I talked to y'all, but I figured I would come out here and talk either way. But uh, that's the only time I ever met Tom T. Hall. And I thought when I moved to Nashville, I think he did a thing maybe a year or two before I moved to Nashville. He did a thing at the Hall of Fame where he played once a week for a month. And I thought, man, stuff like that goes on in Nashville. I'm, I'm there. And I was thinking I'd get to see him again. Never got to see him play uh, in Nashville or anywhere else outside of that. I quickly learned that the people who I would meet, if they were Tom T. Hall fans, I usually really liked their music, and I definitely liked them as people, like people in the business, because not everybody really cared. You know, time moves on, and uh, you know, but uh, like Peter Cooper came, was friends with Tom T. He uh, narrated Tom T.'s book, this, uh, The Songwriters Nashville. It's on Audible. It's really, really good. I strongly recommend you guys go pick that up. I have a hard copy of the book, but there's way more to the narrated audiobook version. They updated it in some way. I have like an old pressing from the 70s of the book, and uh, I strongly urge you to go get that. I don't get anything from it. But there's scenes in there. They're pretty heavy, man. Think about uh, Tom T. Hall being a kid growing up in... Um, is it Mount Olive, Kentucky? I think something Olive, Kentucky is where he was from, a little town, and uh, maybe Olive Hill. I can't remember. Oh, well, I should edit that out, but I won't. But imagine this kid growing up in a small town, and um, just because of his gifts and his these, this work ethic of writing, being able to come up with stories and, uh, you know, thoughts in his head that he would put to paper and then put the three chords into songs. That ability and gift of his led him to be known by a lot of people and then one day be friends with a president. One of my favorite parts of the book was or about the audio book where he's friends with Jimmy Carter and he was actually in the room with Jimmy Carter when the hostages was, were released and he got to sit there and just observe uh, Jimmy Carter when he gets, he finds out that the, they're safe and they're coming home. And I, the weight of this cost him his presidency. And Jimmy Carter just starts crying because he's so happy that those, that those people are safe and they're coming home. And Tom T. Hall got to be there and witness that. So I have a lot of personal thoughts and memories that I'll share with you. These are all off the top of my head. But I remember getting a getting a text from my buddy Mike Bubb. This is a few years back, and he says, man, there's an estate sale today, and Tom T. Hall is selling off a lot of his stuff, and you might want to go. So I'm like, hell yeah, I'm all in. So I go to the estate sale, and he's getting rid of a lot of cool stuff. One of the things that he got rid of was um, a pool table that I guess George Jones had passed out on and got a rug and wrapped himself in the rug and slept on top of this pool table for the night. And um, and uh, my buddy Sean Camp was there, and, man, he bought a lot of stuff. He really uh, was a huge Tom T. Hall fan, which is one more reason to love Sean. And Mike Bubb, definitely a Tom T. Hall fan. But, you know, I think I have to get something. There's uh, guitars, 
there's just so many personal items, but everything costs a fair amount, which they should. And I want to get something, but I just didn't have much money. And I'm waiting for the cheap items. And finally, they bring up this wicker suitcase. And they say, well, there's some things in here, but we're not going to say what they are. You just bid on it blindly. And it ends up, uh, nobody's bidding on it. I'm like, all right, this is mine. So it's just wicker suitcase, like more of a briefcase, but somewhere in between sizes. And I buy it for like $5. And I'm like, all right, man, I got something at Tom T. Hall. So I take it home. I'm looking through it. And just junk drawer items is pretty much what it is. So I finally get to, to uh, I see there's this little key in a display case. And it's a key to a city. I don't even remember the name of the, of the town, but it's the town. I start Googling it and looking it up. And it's the town when uh, Tom T. Hall wrote about a week in a country, a week in a country jail. Um, it's the town where he spent the week in the jail. And all of these years later, somebody realized this guy's famous and he's a big deal. So let's see if we can have him come here and give him the key to the city. So I guess he did that. They gave him the key to the city and it meant so little to Tom T. Hall that he came home and must have thrown it in a junk drawer and never thought about it again. But I have it, you know, I bought it and it means a lot to me. And um, that's the thing that I, I have it sitting inside on my, um, on my fireplace mantle. Maybe I'll make a video about that one day. But anyway, just this morning I'm thinking about uh, of my friends. I'm thinking of Tom Utes. I'm thinking of Peter Cooper. I'm thinking of Sean Camp and I'm thinking of Mike Bubb. Last time I saw Mike, we were making uh, some videos. We were recording those videos in the cemetery there in, in Nashville. And when he pulled up, he was blaring out of his truck, uh, I hope it rains at my funeral. And um, just singing along and uh, love Mike Bubb, man. And he, I, we just stood there and talked about Tom T. Hall and how great Tom T. Hall is and now was. So the last thing I'll say is I want to urge you guys to go listen to some Tom T. Hall today and go deep. There's a lot of stuff on Spotify you know, or all the streaming sites, but you can go really deep. There's a lot of stuff I believe isn't on there. And I've found records at garage sales, you know, thrift stores, flea markets, like $2, Tom T. Hall records. And you grab it and you see songs on there I've never heard. And it's always gold. There's so much good stuff. But uh, let's go listen to some Tom T. Hall today and uh, celebrate his life. And tell me down below what your favorite Tom T. Hall songs are, and I will see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you guys.